heading for the sideline and Eden again over the sideline. Good defence again from Warrington. Johnston, what a pass, the ball try to be for John Stewart. 20 years of age, but my, he knows where the try line is. You're all part of the same team, you're all trying to win games, you're all on the same page when you're a team, but at the same time, you're trying to win each other's jerseys, and so it's competition for places. Yeah, 100%, you know, the, you always know there's someone behind you. Like, now I'm in the first team and I'm playing OK at the minute, but I always know there's someone behind me who's wanting to set that shit off me. So, once you've got the shit, you've got to keep it. And when I was younger, you know, there was, there was quite a few lads who played the same position as me, and I probably dipped my toe in a little bit at the start, but... Uh, Something I wish I did a bit more was back myself, and not in an arrogant way, like, you still got to conduct yourself as a young professional and, and respect other people, but when you get on that rugby pitch, you know, it's you versus them at times, and um, if you're hungry enough, I think you'll get your, get what you want. You must have been hungry enough, Josh, because you got a contract with the academy, um, and after a few years in the, the academy, you got a first-team contract. What was that like, moving from the academy environment to a first-team Super League environment? Yeah, well, I had Paul Anderson coaching me in the academy, who was a... Uh, was really direct coach and that's something that I loved and I've got a good relationship with Paul now. Um, but I think he really used the academy as like a first team, so he, he created a first team environment, he, he coached first teams before at Huddersfield. Um, but again, I was a big fish in a small pond at the academy, I was playing well, everyone thought I was good and I was getting tipped to be this, that, the other. And um, When I went up to that first team, it was a bit of a reality check. You know, I was... I was a small fish in a big pond and again I just wanted to earn respect from lads you know but whether that was on the pitch or off the pitch that was something I always pride myself on and uh, yeah just small things manners you know really little things that players do pick up on um, and when young lads come up now um, there's a great backroom staff here but that's what they're constantly reminding it's being good people first you're here because you're good at rugby but you've got to be a good person as well and I think that's massive I think it's an interesting message there, and I know Paul Anderson's philosophy is good athletes, you want you to be the best rugby player you yeah. can be, but the foundation of that is the person underneath yeah. and how they conduct themselves and, and their behaviours and, and attitudes yeah. and their, how they uh, respond to other people. Do you think that helped you make the progression? 100%. I think, like, socially, you've got to be a completely different person to what you're on the pitch. It's small things, coming in, shaking everyone's hand, looking people in the eye when you speak to them. It's stuff like that. And I think that takes you a long way. You know, respect is massive in this game. And uh, like I said before, you, you're here because you're good enough at the rugby. Everything else is just uh, optional and it's a decision that you have to make. Then the next step up, you got a call from the England Knights. Yeah. What was that like? Yeah, that was, again, I was really buzzing. I wasn't expecting it at all. Um, Paul rang me and said, I have, I have a chance of playing this year, but uh, he wanted, to, wanted me to improve a few things on my game, which, you know, you take, you've got to take criticism. To move forward, you, you have to take criticism. Nobody's the finished article. Um, and I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed with trying to get better. And I think that's something else that you need. You need to be obsessed with what you're doing. And if you're not, then you need to have a look at yourself and say, right, because I was always aiming for the next thing. So I got the call from England Knights. And when I was at the England Knights, all I could think about was playing well to get into the England first team. And uh, I got the call off Wayne to come into the squad. I've not debuted yet. Uh, I've been 18th man twice for the England, England first team now. But I've been in and around the camp and it's something I'm hungry for now and I really want it. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get there. And that, that attention to detail and that obsession, the word that you used, about constantly seeking to improve uh, is a quality that's going to help you get there, I've no doubt. Yeah, 100%. And that's off the field as well. You know, it's all well and good being here. And then you go home and all your mates think you're a superstar. And, and don't get me wrong, you can go out and have a few beers with your mates. And you, you've got to be you've got to be clever and think about when you can do this. Look when you've got two days off after, you know, so, stuff like that. Because... Uh, Sam says it, Sam Burgess says it, your body is the biggest tool that you need. If your body's not where it needs to be, then you're not going to be anywhere where you need to be. So I think the dedication as well is a good word for uh, what you do away from the game, definitely. We get paid to play games with us friends. If you think, if you look at it on a really yeah, basic level, exactly, yeah. we get paid to play TIG with us friends. You know, yeah. and it's, it's, it's a privilege and a, it's an honour to be part of a, a sub squad. And I can tell, sitting there and listening to you, I can see that's how you feel. Yeah, you know, I love the game and like I've never worked a day in my life. You know, I've come up through the ranks here from scholarship to the academy to the first team. I've never worked a day in my life. You know, I love coming in here. I love playing rugby with my mates, and um, I've made sacrifices along the way. It's not just been given to me, uh, and I think I've earned it. And even now, I'm still not happy where I'm at. 
I always want to be better, I want to be at the top, so I want to win things. Um, again, it comes back to the obsession. Um, any advice for a younger Josh or a young player who's just made scholarship and who aspires to follow you in your footsteps? What advice would you give them? Uh, looking back at myself, a bit of advice I'd give myself was um, to not look too far ahead. Uh, game to game, if I could go again. I was always I was obsessed with wanting to get in the first team, which isn't a bad thing. But I was probably looking too far, you know, I had a couple of reality checks. But again, lucky enough, I had Paul Anderson there, who was there to give me a reality check and sit me down and talk to me. Um, but yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really change anything. Um, I'm, if, I, if you told me three years ago where I'd be now, I'd, be, I'd snatch your hand off and I'd take it. So again, it comes back to the obsession though. I, I've always been obsessed. I've always done what's needed to be done and I will continue to do that. Yeah, it strikes me you'd certainly know how to roll up your sleeves and get on with the hard work that, that goes before any success. And exactly, it's not always a, a, a smooth ride. You know, you'll have, you'll have the highest of the ups and then next week you'll be down in the dumps. Uh, everyone calls it the roll course for a reason. You've got to be able to take, to take a few blows, you know, and just carry on. You're going to have people doubting you all the time, but I think for me, it's something you, you've got to you've got to have a tunnel vision. You know, you've got to look in front and not to the side, not to the side, not be definitely not behind you. And if you can do that, I think you're on the right track. You mentioned something earlier about receiving criticism, and a coach d delivers criticism for the purpose of making you a better player because yeah. he wants to have a better athlete on the field. As a young player, how did you cope with that criticism? Um, I, I've always been pretty straightforward. You know, my dad's always been real straightforward with me and you know, my younger brother as well. And I, I think that's something that I'd never change now. Because when I've spoke to Paul, when I've spoke to Daryl, when I've spoke to Steve Price, Sam, I've always wanted direct. Um, but sometimes some lads don't like it direct. You know, some lads like it different. So I think you've got to find what works for you and, and be vocal with your coach and speak to your coach and have that open flow with them as well. Um, hopes for 2024. You've got a new coach. Warrington probably stuttered a little bit last year. Yep. What are your hopes and aspirations for this year? I'm desperate to win something. This is my this is my sixth season now, uh, full time. I debuted in 2019, and uh, I'm just desperate to win something. All, all I'm looking forward to now is just winning things. Um, obviously, uh, a personal goal of mine would be play for England as well. I know there's a there's a game in France uh, mid season, so that's a personal thing. But I'd, I'd love to win something. I'm desperate to win something. Now.